In this part of the Management Decision Tools Exploring the Queuing Theory discussion, we will learn more about the relationship between temporal variations in rates such as arrival rate, service rate, with the fluctuations in time such as inter-arrival time and service time. So on this slide, for example, we see two uh, uh, time series graphs. Uh, illustrating two different occasions. One is on about calls per hour, incoming calls per hour to a, perhaps a call center. And the other one is about average daily physician visits, uh, say for a particular ward or for a particular uh, patient bedroom. Let's just look at uh, the left-hand side, for example. Uh, this is a time series. Why? Because the x-axis has got time, time of day, hour of day. And the y-axis has got average calls per hour. So example, here we see that in the first hour of operation, perhaps 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., we had 1.4 to 1.3 calls per hour. It spiked up to nearly 2 in the second hour of operations, and then it dropped drastically down to, say, 0 0.5 calls per hour uh, on the fifth and the sixth hour of operation. Good. But let's think about it again. What does it mean by having 0 0.5 call per hour during that hour from the 5th to the 6th hour of operation? Because in that hour, you either have 0 or 1 call. How do you get an average of 0 0.5 call per hour, isn't it? Yeah. So the idea being that um, we have to understand this as a uh, calibrated or proportionate rate based on the measured evidence. Clearly, that has to be done within the hour. But uh, within the hour, when we get certain evidence that it will become uh, prorated to 0 0.5 call per hour, then we state it as 0 0.5 call per hour. As an illustration, uh, this is similar to reading the heart rate meter. When <clears throat> the meter measures 60 beats per minute in the first 10 seconds, of measurement right we would think that our heart rate was actually beating at 60 beats per minute right then it may fluctuate up and down in the next 10 seconds to 90 beats per minute then 70 beats per minute and so on now let's think about that 60 beats per minute in the first 10 seconds within the 10 seconds how can the heart rate meter measure 60 counts right because it's hardly one minute it's just 10 seconds uh, and so we would um, sort of understand it by thinking that the heart rate meter must have registered one beat per second on average. That's why when you prorate it to 60 seconds, you should have 60 beats per minute during that first 10 seconds. Yeah, okay. So that's that much is understandable. And that's how we obtain what we call the instantaneous uh, rate. So here, early on, we talked about lambda being the average. Let's, here we, let's say here we call it lambda instantaneous. So the y-axis actually contains the instantaneous uh, estimate of the arrival rate of calls into that call center during that hour. And instantaneous rates are always a function of time. So as time passes, the rates will go up and down and it will fluctuate. Then where is lambda, right? If we studied lambda, we should be able to see lambda. Where is lambda? The lambda equivalent will be this horizontal line that will be the best average across the y-axis. Okay, so suppose this is the point uh, that will be the mathematically uh, correct average. Then we end up saying that, well, for that day, for that day, for the 24 hours of operation, uh, a good estimate of lambda, which always refers to the long-term constant, long-term as in across the day, not minute by minute, second by second. So long-term in that sense, and across the whole day, across the long-term measurements, our average, our average rate of arrival of calls per hour basis, lambda is two per hour. Okay, so let's just use that notion again on our second example. 
uh, that there are physician visits, okay? And it is a rate because it is daily. It is daily. Uh, even though they did not say it is per day, it is actually per day because it's daily. So daily physician visits, uh, 120, then dropped to 110. And it is the day of the week, day of the week. So the measurement is on a per day basis. And long term refers to uh, the whole week, which is five working days, perhaps in this case. And our instantaneous lambda will be expressed as a number of visits per day. So we have 120, 110, so that fluctuates and that's okay. That's why there is there are temporal uh, variations. And then to establish a lambda, an average value across all the rates, we have to find an average point on the y-axis such that it uh, is representative of the average visits per day across all the observed points and this could be 100 visits per day let's say right so essentially that's the average value on the y-axis across cutting across being representative across long term that is on the x-axis so you notice that when we say long term it doesn't mean 10 years 20 years right there's no absolute sense of long term because our uh, our unit of time the on the rate is uh, kind of needs to be practical, right? So if it's on a per day or per second or per minute, then long term simply has to be many times more than that unit. That would be kind of uh, sufficient to, to depict the long term scenario. All right. And that is about identifying the, the uh, lambda on the time on the on the rate axis. Now what about the time axis? What about the inter-arrival time? What about the 1 over lambda and 1 over mu, where those will be the average of time intervals? And the unit will be second, minute, hour, day, week, month, right? And it will not be on a per day, per month, per unit basis. So we measure the time intervals and then we plot them in a chart like this on the bottom. Notice that it's no, no longer a time series chart. So the two charts above, they are time series charts because the x-axis is time. On the bottom, it's no longer a time series chart because the x-axis is uh, our unit of measure, right? So that is time. It is our unit of measure. It is time, but it is time interval. It is what we are measuring, not based on, uh, how shall we put it? It is precisely the quantity that we, sh we are measuring, so which is the time interval. And the y-axis is always percentage frequency or absolute frequency themselves, but here we express it as percentage. So it is either frequency or in this case, relative frequency, which is a number between 0 to 1 or 0% to 100%. So what this means is that we, are, we observe, for example, the time interval between consecutive customers uh, that last one minute, because this is in minutes, one minute and below, we saw across many, many hundreds or even several thousands of observations, we saw 32 to 33 counts of those so certain parts of the arrival pattern uh, the customers are bunched up together such that the time interval not distance but the time interval between them uh, were less than a minute how about uh, how many occasions were there where after seeing one customer the next customer arrives at uh, or between 15 minutes to 16 minutes apart we saw uh, maybe one or two because this this, this bar here is very short, showing a height of one or two. And since this is relative per, uh, frequency, 1% uh, to 2% of the time. Okay. And what is then interesting is that when we, when we plot the general shape of this distribution, we find that it is actually a sloping down curve very nicely and very uh, uh, precisely described by a mathematical function called exponent 